Hi everyone, my name is Arita Mogeni, a financial advisor at Cyton Investment. Today I would like to talk about a topic that has become very critical in our lives uh, in terms of how we are able to manage and grow our wealth, and that is financial planning. Why a financial plan and what is really the importance of financial planning? Financial planning is uh, ideally, in simple terms, a process uh, that allows you to determine your short-term and long-term financial goals and also uh, be able to create a tentative balance plan on how to achieve those goals. What are the key factors that may influence a, a very good uh, personal financial plan? Some of those factors uh, include one's marital status, uh, employment status, that is you're either employed or self-employed, uh, income, age, number of dependents, um, the prevailing economic um, uh, situation, that is uh, ideally the economic outlook, and also one's health status. These are assumptions that are very critical uh, when you're building uh, a very good financial plan and there are assumptions that now you'd want to feed into the next stage of that financial plan, which is what are these key pillars that build a very good financial plan. The key pillars that we consider as very important to a very good financial plan uh, is one, budgeting. Budgeting ideally uh, means that uh, you are able to live within your means, that is being able to spend what you earn. And in budgeting, one of the key important aspects you consider is what are your income items and expense items. Uh, so the first step in budgeting is ideally to uh, list the income items and your expense items. And most importantly, the expense items. Under expense items, you also want to go further and classify those expenses as one, necessary, and two, discretionary. Necessary expenses are those that you can't do without. Uh, whereas discretionary expenses are ideally those expenses uh, that you can do without. And when now you're drawing a budget and you're, you're, you're coming up with your expense assumptions uh, for, for a given month, you want to focus more on necessary expenses and cut down on discretionary expenses. The second pillar of a good financial plan is savings. A savings is ideally being able to set aside a percentage of your income for future use um, uh, because one, you're going to get to that age when you're not going to be able to work anymore. That is what you call retirement or you're going to get to that age where, as a business person, you'd want to call it a day and be able to rest. So how are you going to sustain your lifestyle during that time? It's by taking uh, a percentage of your monthly income, uh, that is either employment income or business income, and being able to put it in a savings scheme uh, or an investment vehicle that allows that money to keep growing. The thumb of the rule in terms of saving is that you must be able to at least save 10% of your income at the end of every month. As you do so, also look at unforeseen circumstances. As much as you save, you, you have a savings account, also create a complementary emergency fund account that allows you uh, to save such that if you're employed, and you get out of a job, are you able to live for three, six months, let's say one year, without changing your lifestyle? Yeah. Uh, or if you're running a business and the economic outlook is such that it's very difficult to make money in the business environment where you're set up, are you able to still take care of your business expenses and your personal expenses uh, for three to six months? while you give your business an opportunity to recover. The third key pillar is debt management. Why do we run into debt? We run into debt because we spend beyond the income levels that we're able to generate at the end of every given month. And uh, under debt management, uh, we have what you call good debt and bad debt. Good debt is one that you invest uh, in either education, 
business, or property for future gain. And bad debt is when you borrow money to ideally uh, spend in consumables. And finally, the fourth pillar of financial planning is investing. Consider a situation where you budgeted well for your money, uh, where you've been able to accumulate uh, income from your various revenue sources. Uh, you've created uh, also your expense assumptions for that for any given month, and you've also saved. But the bigger question is, where are you investing these savings? We have two channels where you can be able to invest, either in the traditional market, uh, that is, um, under the traditional market you have investment vehicles like the stock market, that is the equities market, um, in other words. We also have uh, the government securities. You can also invest through social capital, that is through the circles. One of the big features of uh, the traditional markets, or rather the key features, is that they tend to offer liquidity, guarantee of returns, but when you look at the returns, they are low and they tend to underperform inflation. You can also look at investing in the alternative markets. The alternative markets are ideally uh, real estate and uh, private equity. In real estate, you may want to consider going either yourself, uh, but you'll face challenges because in most cases, the folks who've been able to get the most out of a real estate are really firms which have specialized capabilities to unlock the potential that this market segment offers. And such firms are firms like Cyton Investment uh, because we invest in investment grade, well-planned and comprehensive real estate uh, that is largely pre-sold off-plan. With this, we're able to offer compelling, high-yielding returns uh, on investment products whose underlying assets are the real estate projects that we're doing. In private equity, the opportunities are, are to invest really in farms that have very, uh, very high upside potential in terms of growth. And uh, sometimes you may need also specialist capabilities to be able to identify these farms. When you walk through uh, well-established uh, entities like Cyton Investment, and then you're able to uh, participate in a pool that identifies these opportunities in the alternative markets and be able uh, to earn above market uh, returns. Why financial planning? Having looked at the factors that influence financial planning, uh, the pillars that you need to be able to develop a very sound financial plan, why, why all this hassle? The bigger benefit that financial planning offers you is it allows you to build a good nest egg uh, that when you're out of a job, you're able to continue with your life like nothing has happened. Or when you have an emergency that falls outside what you consider your normal monthly expenditure, and then it allows you to take care of that emergency. The second key uh, importance, ideally, uh, to be able to continue with the same standard of living that you have today. Thirdly, to be able to have financial freedom, and which is very important. That is, you get out of what most of us now call the rat race of life. You'd want to ask yourself, how can I get a tentative financial plan that is tailored to my needs? To learn more about financial planning and other wide range of courses including tax planning and um, wealth management training classes uh, that we offer every Saturday, kindly subscribe to www.cyton.com slash pwmt.